Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you how to come up with a really cool word cloud in R, just like this one we have right here. I did it by cities, you could do it by anything, UPCs, items, people's names, you could even do it in another video I have. Uh, you'll see it down below or at the end of this video there's a link to it and you can go and look at um, how I did sentiment analysis based on Twitter data. In this case, we're using a department store chain data uh, from the southeast. This could be anything. Think things like Kohl's, Lowe's, Home Depot, um, Dillard's, stores like that. And uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly what stores is for, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's the same regardless. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to first bring in all these libraries. There's uh, seven libraries here, Tiny Text, Text Data, Read Excel, Deployer, Stringer, uh, Tribble, or t I'm sorry, Tibble. It's Tribbles or Star Trek stuff. Tibble, ggplot2, and that's the main gist here. There will be one down below. I'll get to it in a minute. Um, and if you don't have them, obviously use this code, install.packages, and then you put it in quotation marks. If you don't put that, it won't find it. Okay, and then in this case, if I wanted text data. Okay, then I have to read in the data. So you're going to use read Excel. Now, what I want you to understand is why am I using read underscore Excel? Because I have sheets, right? So you have comma after your URL, and then you put sheet equals whatever it the sheet name is. If it's sheet one, then it's sheet one. Make sure that it's capitalized correctly or it will not find it. It's very uh, anal retentive. Um, if you, so if, if your capitals are off, your spaces are off, your underscores are off, it will not find it. I've had to ask that, or people ask me that in the past. Um, then what you want to do, once you've loaded and you want to look at it, what does it look like? So I'm putting it into this uh, data right and that's going to be a data frame but let's take a look and just make sure so if we hit control and enter okay it's actually a tibble at this point because of the data is coming in that's fine it's a form of a data frame and uh it's got city right which is avon moneda danville it's got the quantity sold and extended selling price items amount so this is a uh chain store data for a coupon or a series of coupons in a campaign post COVID. So it's recent data from October of 2020 for a company. Um, so we have the head, which is the top six rows of data. So we can look at our data, right? And what we have to do now is this is not enough. We have to have a column with a line number, right? Because this isn't even though we have that kind of sort of here, one through six, in R we will need to have that as a separate column so to do that what we're going to do is this right here which is we're going to take the data which we just brought in with these three columns and we're going to mute we're going to add to see this pipe right here we're going to mutate line number equals row number okay so once we've done that you can look at city names and you can either do this and look at it here which will give you the top 10 obviously there's in this case there's 667,000 rows but now you've got city it's still a tibble. You've got city, quantity sold, net sold price amount, but you've also got line number. See that, which corresponds to the line number here. We need that in a minute. So remember, we're going to try and make this right here. So to do that, next we're going to take a look at this. You can also do this. You can type, so I put in city names because it is city names. Um, I like to make things you know less confusing if I can. And so if I do the head, that gives me a top six. See the same thing. You don't have to. It'll just give you a top ten if you don't do that. Now, what I want to do is I want to look at the top ten by default of common words, right? Or um, in this case, cities. So if I do this, right, and I put it into city names, I've looked at it by data frame set, so it's as dot data frame because I need to have that format later on. Tibble is not enough, so I need to have that. So now, if I look at the head of it, let's take a look at that. It gives me that same thing: line number, extent selling price, amount quantity sold, and city. But it is a what a data frame now because I use this right here. Now, once I have that, I want to see the top 10 by default, right? So I do this right here, where what I'm doing is I'm taking city names, and I'm piping into account city names of city, which is that column sort equals true. So what happens if I do that? I get this. See that? So now what I'm trying to do is get away from the four columns. But what I want to see is the city name, which could have one 
or two parts to it. It's like Chesapeake is one, is the whole city name. Virginia Beach, two words, is the city name. So I don't want to go and have Virginia and the beach on a different row because I would double this if I did that. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to take this, but I don't want this big, long uh, name for this column of city names, dollar sign city. So what I really want to do is the same thing, but I want to have instead city names count of city sort equals true. Now what happens? Look at that. Now I've got city to tibble and remember we left the other part where we made the data frame. So now we've got it's a tibble and we've got the number of occurrences for each city in this data. So I know from this data that we have in Virginia Beach 113,816 redemptions for this campaign. Chesapeake, we have 30,566. In Newport News, we have 37,637. So that's where this is going to show. So I want to show the city names by how many. So obviously, Virginia Beach is the largest. That's going to show like this. Chesapeake is the second largest. It's going to show smaller than Virginia Beach, but it's going to show like this. So next, what I want to do is I want to graph the most common words. So it's kind of like a little process here. So we're going to use uh, city names, kind of like we did before with the count, but I'm going to add a filter. I want greater than 5,000, right? Because if I show every single city, it's going to be very hard to read over. It would, it would be a horrible looking graph. So I'm going to have it n greater than 5,000. And then we're bringing in a reorder of it, city equals, so instead of having city n, we're going to reorder it. And we're going to have ggplot, we're bringing in aesthetic city comma n, geome column, right? Because I want to have columns. I want to have uh, like a bar graph, okay? Uh, and then we're going to add the x label, y label, make sure you have the plus before them and after for these two. Okay, and then coordinate flip. And the reason being is if I don't do that, I'll have the cities across the bottom. I want the cities across the side. And then when we, what you have to understand is you're putting in so many options in here that you have to go and bring in the title second after that. So that's what this is. So I'm putting it into P up here. And then down below, I bring P back plus GG title. So that's the plot. P is for plot. I could call it anything I want to. It doesn't matter. It's called plot, plot one, whatever. Um, but once I do that, watch what happens. Okay. And because I've limited to greater than 5,000, I've only got, you know, maybe 30 here. But if I were to limit this to no limit, it would be un unreadable. If I limit to 1,000, let's see what happens here just to show you why I picked 5,000. See that it becomes unreadable because there's too much data in there and they're overlapping and I it's useless. So 5,000 was pretty good. You could go less than that. You could go more. It's up to you what you want to do and what you want to see. This is not the end word plot, obviously, but this is just a piece showing you up to, okay, we know Virginia Beach is much larger. It's more than twice as big as Chesapeake. That's why you see that huge Virginia Beach there. And then you can see the breakout of these and you'll see a lot of them in this size range. Okay, and they'll be very hard to distinguish the sizes here, but the main thing is you want to see the top ones and see the differences. And it's kind of cool to see that. So next we're going to do is this. Remember I told you we're going to bring in one more library, Word Cloud. If you don't have this, just go and use it, install that packages, quotation marks, Word Cloud. Once you have that, it's very simple to do this. We're going to bring city names. We're going to pipe this in. Now I've left these on here because in case you wanted to filter something out. So for instance, I'm not saying you have to use cities like this. You could have used uh, UPC numbers. I really wouldn't do that. But you could use uh, item names, right? You could products, genes, what type, uh, you know, uh, long, short, um, straight, narrow, whatever. They could be different kinds. And you could say, you know, maybe there's a certain name brand you want to filter out. Maybe there's a certain type you want to filter out. So if you want to filter something out, you'd use this right here where you'd use word not equals whatever it is you want to filter out. Um, if you're using something like I did with the sentiment analysis and you want to remove certain words that are meaningless, same thing, you would join in stop words or something like that. Go watch that video and I'll show you exactly how to do that. That's not what we're doing here. We're using cities. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this city names and pipe in count of city. See it? We're going to pipe in with word cloud of city comma n, right? 
same as we did before, city comma n, okay? And let's go here, max words equals 30, colors equals brewer dot pal for the palette, nine spectral. Let's see what that does right here. So let's run the whole thing and see how it comes up like that. Now you can go now, see how I cut off the top and the bottom. What I like to do when that happens is just hit yes, delete that out and then run it again. There we go. And it might move it around, you know, so if I did this again, it won't necessarily always show it the exact same way. Okay, now it is Virginia Beach at the bottom, but you can clearly see Virginia Beach is three times, four times as big as Chesapeake. And the reason being is we already saw that data before. So this is a cool way to show the data, but you also want to have the graph of the most common words. And I'll bring that back up here in a second to back up what you're saying, because this shows the data behind it. This actually shows why Virginia Beach is that big versus Chesapeake versus Hayes, for instance, right? So, and then once I go through that, I can bring this up and click this. Now, see again how it cuts off the edges? So do this, just delete it, right, the graph, and then reload it. There we go. And see now it moves it around, now it moves it to the top. What if I do it again? And it moves to the bottom. It doesn't matter. You can, you can redo it as many times as you need to to move it around the way that's pleasing to you. In this case, I use spectral from the Brewer palette. And the reason being is I wanted it to be different colors based on sizes. So you can see the biggest one is a blue. The smallest ones are like a red and in between is like an orange yellow color. So it makes it easy to differentiate. I could have used reds and then they're all shades of red and it becomes harder to see the, the smaller ones. Um, same with blues or anything like that. So spectral works really good there. But this is how you do a word cloud in R. It's very simple, very easy to do. Make sure you follow those steps. Uh, make sure you add in that extra line or that column that I, like I showed you. Um, make sure that um, the big things here are to make sure you make the names. You know, it's very easy to go and use the wrong uh, data uh portion for this. So just follow what I did, how I did it. Um, and then also make sure you do this to uh, look at the graph breakout of these words or cities in this case. So you can make sure it makes sense when you get through that. So we know, you know, which one's the largest or which ones are the largest. Make sure you load the correct libraries and then you'll end up with, and see this, see how it cuts it off. That's because we already run it. So we just have to clear out the uh, plots and then just do it again. And there it is. And if I don't like that one, I, you know, I don't like the way that one looks. So let's do it again. And maybe I don't like that one. Let's do it again. There we go. See that, that one's more pleasing. I like the Virginia beach kind of in the middle and I like having, you know, uh, some of the colors below and above that looks more pleasing and nice, but it depends on your data. It depends on what you're trying to do. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. This is really cool stuff. It's a great way to be able to show your data in different ways to audiences that please them, uh, especially with uh, online data, Facebook data replies, uh, Twitter replies, um, product, uh, UPCs that or items that people are purchasing for a campaign and you can show which ones were purchased the most. It's just a neat way to look at it, a different way to look at it. And just use that along with the other graph I showed you earlier. Thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. I got a lot of great videos like this coming out. There's a lot of great ones like this already on the channel. Go check out the rest of the videos in the channel down below and uh, leave, be sure and leave me a comment. Thanks again. Have a great day. I'd love to hear from you. Bye.